It's the Insider's View of Jay Leno's Tonight Show behind the curtain with Chicago and Dave Berg joining the show. Good morning, Dave. Good morning. It's great to be with you. Dave, are you from Chicago? Did you go to Thorn Ridge? Yes, I did. I grew up on the south side, and I went to uh, Northwestern on the north side. So you're a Chicago guy. And proud of it. Right? Where do you get your beefs? <laughs> I like Mr. Beef. There you go. Who doesn't? How'd yeah, you, he's Chicago. Right? How did you get started with Jay Leno and The Tonight Show? Well, sometimes stuff just happens. I got fired from my, my previous job, which had been at NBC News, and as happenstance goes sometimes, it just turned out that this was around the time just before the new Tonight Show with Jay Leno was starting. They moved into the office right down the hall from me. So I, I told my wife about it. Uh, isn't this interesting? This new, this iconic show is moving in. And she said, well, you know what you're going to do after this call? And I said, what? She said, you're going to go down there and apply for a job. And I did. Smart woman. Yes, smarter than me. And I love in the new book because you talk about what goes on behind the curtain, which, you know, people see what obviously they see on television, but they don't know certain things about, you know, celebrities. You had President Obama on. And one of the things that I love was reading about the J Bar. Uh, as a producer, you really have to accommodate your guests, it sounds like. Well, yes and no. Uh, our biggest problem, and may maybe this happens to you as well, the biggest problem we had with guests, was not the fact that they were hard to work with or difficult or diva, nothing like that. The biggest problem is that many of them were just nervous. Now, so, you said, you told a story, you tell a story in your book about one guy I never thought would have stage fright, and that's, you know, the king of beers himself, Reverend Jesse Jackson. Uh, you said he had stage fright on occasion. Absolutely. That totally threw me for a loop, and I remember bringing him to the area backstage uh, just before he was supposed to go out, uh, just before Jay introduced him, and he's sitting there and he's starting to shake and then shake even uh, more, and then he puts his hands on both of my shoulders and says, y you know, I can't stand up. I, I, get a I get a little bit nervous. Who would have thought he was a nervous Nelly? But the weird thing is, as soon as he was introduced and went out on stage, he was fine. Was that because Blagojevich and the U.S. attorneys were in the green room on the... And what you know, whether his son was trying to buy the set of seats. You know, I knew you were a good columnist. I didn't know you were that good. <laughs> hey, Dave. So we're back to the J Bar, though. This is liquor, obviously, to relax some of the folks yes. that's out there. But some of them went a little too far. Like I read about Quentin Tarantino. Yes. Here's the thing about uh, the J Bar. There's a context to it. Um, it goes back to the days of Johnny Carson. Uh, you might, because you had mentioned that you were fans of Johnny. Sure. Well, alcohol was a huge part of their humor. Now, alcohol, not so much today, but there was a great tradition to that. And I think, um, I think Quentin Tarantino, the great director that he is, was actually trying to carry on that tradition. Because now, by the way, I never called him drunk. I just said that he slurred his words. That's right. all I said. Right. <laughs> the the <Anyway>. light. Go on. <laughs> so he goes on the show. And he starts making references to the great guest, Dean Martin, and people like that on Johnny Carson. I think he was trying to carry out that tradition. <laughs> Either that or he, he maybe he just said, what was it, a Manhattan? What was it? Oh, it's Martini? Just, you yeah. know, just a beer. Did you have a bartender at least, for God's sake? <laughs> yes, we did. Last that is a show. They get what they want. Well, what was it? Well, President Obama was the first, what, sitting president to come on, on late night talk? That may not seem like a big deal as we're talking about it now, but in uh, 2009, um, no president had ever appeared on a late night show. It was considered to be unpresidential. Uh, it still so is. <laughs> it still is in, in my book. The president doesn't perform, doesn't sit. I, I need to ask you a question, okay? In that same chair. This is might sound vulgar. I did not go over this with Lauren Cohn, who's a lady, but I need to ask this. Sometimes starlets seem to have a di difficulty sitting in those chairs. <laughs> do they ever? Do the, does the producer ever explain how to so they can sit properly? That is a very interesting question, John, and I don't know how to dance around okay, it. Don't. But it, it. It can be revealing, and yes, we do. Uh, we do talk to them sometimes. 
Okay, I, I, just, I, I just want to get back to the president question because in, okay. in the book you're talking about how you were trying to get Bill Clinton. You even sent a bicycle. So as a producer, you could send things or gifts or even, you know, if you had to cancel someone because you had, let's say, the president, I think you had to cancel Terry Hatcher. You sent gifts. You try and uh, get them back in good graces. Or how does that work? Well, I, I, I don't know. I mean, do, do you do that sometimes? Uh, you're, you're, no. The fact no. That Terry Hatcher was booked on the same day that we booked uh, 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 Pre President Obama. And, of course, he could only do it on that one day. And so just as a nice gesture, we uh, uh, we sent her some flowers. And that, that wasn't good enough for Terry? No, no, it was, no. Actually, actually Terry was very gracious about it. What had happened is her assistant got on the phone and said, look, Terry is happy to move for the president, but, you, you know, you might want to give her a... Uh, uh, just uh, girls like nice gifts, like a nice handbag. And so uh, she, she mentioned a designer purse, which happened to be worth $2,500, a uh, Louis Vuitton. Of course, I'm an idiot. I'm a guy. I don't know anything about it. And I'm, I'm starting to say, sure, a Louis Vuitton, sure, that's terrific. Well, my, my assistant comes running in and saying, no, send flowers. The point of the story is I'm an idiot. Terry Hatcher was very gracious to receive flowers. You're not an idiot. I gotta. I want to talk to you some more. We just have to go now. But just talking to a producer of like a, your quality on the Jay Leno show, making that show so popular with the deals that you had to do to get guests. It's a hard job. I just got. You could talk for hours, and we're gonna read that book. Okay. Behind the Curtain, an insider's view of Jay Leno's Tonight Show by Dave Bird. Will you sign us a copy? You are awesome, man. Completely honored. Right. The book comes out July 10th. Thank you. Thanks, Dave.